Some time ago, I made a video about Lua decompilers. Now, I made an error when I made that video, and it's a rather fatal error. To begin with, the video quality was horrible. The um, video lacked detail, it lacked description, exemplar, and it's just horrible. I mean, it, it, when dealing with an issue like decompilers, it doesn't bring what I think the standard should be on this channel. I've been wanting to raise my standards quite a lot over the past few years. Now, Lua decompiling isn't a simple subject to, you know, accurately describe and give a person a clear view of, and I think my video was really half-assed, and I'm here today in this video to give, you know, to correct my mistakes and make it easier for people who are messaging me on Skype about this issue to fix the problems that they are having or acquire the tools needed to fix said problems that they're having. So this video today is basically going to be about the whole subject of compiling and decompiling and just going over it. Now to begin with we should talk a little bit about compiling. And you know I know some people have short attention spans and are probably not going to listen to this video. I'm going to make this part as short as I can. But it's important you understand what's going on in this video before you come talking to me about it. Now, compiling in the case of, say, for example, a language like C++ is where you take your code and then transform it into an executable. With Lua, it's a little bit different. It takes, you know, for example, regular code and then converts it into what's called byte code. And then that byte code can be transformed, you know, into actual operations on the virtual machine that Lua runs from. Now, it is worth mentioning that, you know, Compiling with, say, for example, C++ and Lua is very different. With, you know, Lua, it's a lot easier to restore the original code, where with C++ and languages like it, where they don't run off an interpreter, you know, there's a lot of difference, and it's a lot harder. So, you know, you can research that if you like, but that's not what I'm going to be focusing on today. What I'm going to be focusing on is how to decompile and compile stuff and to know what decompiler to use. That's the point of the video. It's not meant to go into a lot of detail. If you're at all interested, I'd recommend you go now and do some research onto, you know, just Lua in general and its um, interpreters, so on and so forth. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this code here and I'm going to compile it. I'm using this little uh, batch file that connects to my uh, Lua um, program, so I'll just go ahead and drag and drop this in here. And it creates a um, .lua c file. Now you can see that there's a very clear difference between these two files. This basically is bytecode. It basically consists of a bunch of, you know, numerical representations, so on and so forth. Now, when you're reading bytecode, I recommend you use something like Notepad++. But there's an important little, you know, key here that will tell you which version of Lua you're actually using, and it's this little um, word up here, Lua Q. Now, I'm not particularly certain how Lua, the um, how bytecode works. However, Lua Q basically, I believe, for the version of Lua that we're going to be dealing with is Lua 1.5, I believe. Lua Q basically says, "Hey, this bytecode will be decompiled can be decompiled by, say, for example, um, on Lua Deck or Lua Deck or whatever the hell or on Lua C." So, if you've compiled something with MTA, you can decompile it using the compilers. I'm talking. You know about now. If you, for example, compiled something for um, some random game out there that uses a different version of Lua, you won't be able to do it. An important, you know, point I want to make really quickly is just that bytecode is incompatible across versions. So if you, for example, compile something for MTA, you know, it probably wouldn't run on a, a you know, for example, Love 2D, which runs an entirely different version of Lua that you know uses um, different bytecode. So you do need to use a decompiler that is appropriate for your version of Lua. I'm going to be focusing on 1.5, which I believe is the version used in MTA. If it's for something else, then you would might want to consider, you know, perhaps finding another compiler. Or there's also just the fact that you know, I'm pretty sure compilers don't actually exist for certain um, versions of Lua. Either way, that's not particularly important. I'm going to get on to actually showing you how to decompile this file. Okay, this is the part where we actually get to decompiling a real Lua file. Now, in order to do this, you need, well, 
obviously a decompiler. In this situation, we're going to be using probably a the worst of um, probably one of the worst compilers decompilers out there, Lua Deck, which does um, you know it is a somewhat effective decompiler. However, compared to something like Unlua C, it doesn't work really well. Now, I'll give you an example. You know, let's say for example you want to try and use Lua Deck.exe. You try and drag a file in there. It probably isn't going to work. In order to actually use um, well, it's Lua Deck, you need to write up a batch um, a actual batch command for it. So what you want to create is like a you know batch file like run.bat using for example a text editor. And you want to write something like this. The name of the script that you actually want to read and the output name. So I'm gonna do main and I'm gonna do main lua. Now what you do is simply click on the open here and it will decompile the file. Now, Lua, I mean, Lua Deck does have its deficiencies. When reading some code, it may spit out, you know, errors and all of that, which, you know, something like Unlua C simply doesn't have. And considering the fact that Lua Deck has only about 80 revisions, it's so far running pretty well. Now, it is important, you know, to mention a few things. Now, if you get, for example, an empty file when you try running this little decompiler, there are a few reasons as to why that would happen. And I've, this is a question I've received from some of the people on Skype. Now, there's a few reasons why, you know, this would happen. Either A, the file is encrypted, which you won't be able to see any of the bytecode at all. It's obfuscated, which there'll be some differences here, around here. Um, or just differences in the actual bytecode that make it so that the decompiler simply can't function. Now, really, if you do have a problem where you can't actually get any code out and it just, you know, does not, doesn't flat out work, you know, it is either because the file is encrypted, you know, in the case of MTA, it uses um, a particular asymmetric cipher known as uh, RSA, which protects it. I mean, you can... Like in the case of MTA, you can break the RSA. Uh, we can actually sort of decrypt the um, you know, scripts, you know, encrypted with RSA algorithm that comes with the compiler. However, I'm not going to tell you how to because I'll probably get into trouble. However, you know, it's possible, and if you're trying to decompile an encrypted file, it it won't work no matter what you do. So after this, I'm going to move on to a um, different uh, decompiler known as Unlua C, which is generally more effective and more accurate, but it does require some configuration. Okay, this decompiler is known as Unlua C. It's substantively, you know, higher performing, you know, in the sense that it's better able to decompile, you know, Lua scripts, you know, than, for example, Lua Deck is able to, probably due to the fact that it's had quite a bit more development to it. Now, you do, like, Lua Deck need to write up a batch command for this, and it's a little bit more complex than the one for Lua Deck. You do Java dash jar unlua c dot jar, and then you do what you do with Lua Deck. You simply do the script name here and the script name here. Then you run your little batch command, or your batch file. Sorry, you're going to run your batch file, so we'll do that now. And as you can see, it has successfully decompiled, and it looks a lot closer to the original than um, Lua Deck did. But yeah, this is just basically you know how you can decompile you know files. I mean, that's just basically how it's done. And I'm going to go over briefly some of the stuff that you can't. Now, one thing you cannot decompile is this. This here is RSA ciphertext, or what I believe strongly to be RSA ciphertext, or some asymmetric cipher. Now, this here is Lua bytecode, but it has been encrypted. If you give this to a decompiler, nothing will happen. With MTA, the MTA team implemented a uh, little protective, you know, sort of method to protect scripts, you know, with MTA, and there is a way you can actually decrypt this. I'm not going to tell you again though because I don't want to get into trouble. 
it can be done using a, a function that's built into um, Lua. However, again, I'm not going to tell you what it is. And from there, you can then decompile the bytecode produced by MTA. However, as this is here, you cannot decompile this encrypted script. It's certainly possible to do using MTA or if you nick the public key out of the server files. Um, but, you know, encrypted stuff, you cannot decompile it unless you decrypt it first. You know, encryption basically works by taking data and scrambling it based on a set of secret numbers or numbers stored within your game. So, as I said before, you need to decrypt it. And, you know, people who have an understanding of cryptography and how to, you know, snoop through, for example, a uh, program set of program files or through assembly probably could do this. I would, and I'd be pretty interested to see whether or not anyone could find the key in um, MTA's files. I don't believe anyone um, has tried yet, but um, I also don't have the expertise to, but it's, you know, you can decrypt these files an easier way than that. Now, as I said before, bytecode is pretty much incompatible across versions. Let's say you compile something in Lua 1.5. You need a Lua 1.5 decompiler and a compiler. If you compile something using, say, for example, 4.3 or any other version of Lua, the bytecode is going to be incompatible. That's the reality of it. If you, for example, try using Lua deck on a 1. or a 5.2 file, it won't work. Some software uses a newer version of Lua, so you need an actual decompiler that can, you know, cater to that need in that situation. So, if you do run into that issue where, you know, no matter what you do, you just get nothing out of it, you know, go ahead and actually see if you can find a decompiler to match that particular version of Lua. If you don't have any success with that, I pretty much don't know what to tell you because I don't actually know how to solve that particular problem. This is just a video talking about decompilers and showing you how they work and, you know, how to make them work and explaining what works and what doesn't. I hope this video was a bit better than the previous one and I also hope the video quality is better because I'm using, a, yet again, a better rendering software and um, better settings. So, yeah, ladies and gents, I hope this didn't go on for too long and um, thank you for watching.